good afternoon, and thank you for coming to the Highlands Latin School Grammar School Spring Recitation. This afternoon, our students will present scripture, poetry, and music they have been learning this year. They will tell of stories with wit, chivalry, and faithfulness. They will declare with the heavens the glory of God. It is our prayer that these boys and girls will be formed by what they have learned. It is our hope that what they have learned will help them to be more like Christ. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, we thank God for your commitment to the traditional, classical, and Christian education provided here at HLS. Thank you so much for attending. We hope you enjoy the program. them, and God said unto them, 
Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. The man and woman rebelled against God and were separated from him. But God already had a plan to restore mankind to himself. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above every beast of the field. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God's plan to restore mankind involved the beginning of the new nation when he called Abraham. Now, now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and in thee all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God's ways are often mysterious and sometimes even painful. As the nation of Israel prospered in Egypt, Pharaoh grew fearful of their numbers and forced them into slavery. God used Moses to lead them out of this bondage and into the Sinai wilderness. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall you say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. And the Lord commanded Moses to bless the children of Israel by saying, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
and ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Sadly, people do not always delight in God's law, but God promised one to deliver us from spiritual bondage. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. This one, the Messiah, is the greatest man of faith. In him, God has kept his promise, and his people have been given the power to live lives of faith. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers, which my covenant they break. But I will put my law in their inward hearts, and write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Nightingale and the Lower by William Cowper A nightingale that all day long had cheered the village with his song, nor yet at eve his notes ascended, nor yet when even time was ended, began to feel, as well he might, the keen demands of appetite. When looking eagerly around, he spied far off upon the ground a something shining in the dark, and knew the glower by his spark. So stooping down from hawthorn top, he thought to put him in his crop. The worm, aware of his intent, harangued him thus quite eloquent. Did you admire my lamp, quoth he, as much as I your minstrelsy? You would abhor to do me wrong, as much as I to spoil your song. For twas the selfsame power divine taught you to sing and me to shine, that you with music, I with light, might beautify and cheer the night. The songster heard his short oration, and warbling out his acclamation, released him as my story tells, and found a supper somewhere else. Thank you. 
William of Cornell had no heir of his own, so Queen Victoria ascended the throne. When good Queen Victoria saw reign was over, ever the seventh the English crown door, George the fifth chose to throne home, ever the eighth relinquished the crown. George the sixth, the warriors was king, of Elizabeth the second, her praises we sing, or her subjects declaring, God save the Queen! Matthew 5, 3 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mistress yet, that he may call his own. But here is 
one thus quick to get, as she herself has shown. He kissed her once, he kissed her twice, he kissed her three times over. A wondrous change came in a trice, and she was found no more. Her cheeks grew red as any rose, her brow was white as wine. Her bosom like the winter snows, her eyes like those of fawn. Her breath grew sweet as summer breeze, that blows the meadows over. Her voice grew soft as rustling trees, and cracked and harsh no more. Her hair grew glittering like the gold, her hands as white as milk. Her filthy rags so foul and old, were changed to robes of silk. In great amaze the knights did stare, quoth Kay, I make my vow. If it will please thee, lady fair, I'll gladly kiss thee now. But young Sir Keith kneeled on one knee, and kissed her robe so fair. Oh, let me be thy slave, said he, for none to thee compare. She bent her down, she kissed his brow, she kissed his lips and eyes. Quoth she, I am my master now, my lord, my love, her eyes. And all the wealth that is mine own, my lands I give to thee. For never night hath lady shown such noble courtesy. Bewitched was I in bitter pain, but thou hast set me free. So now I am myself again, I give myself to thee. Walt Whitman is one of the most famous poets in American literature. He wrote the poem after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, a president he greatly admired. The poem itself is filled with metaphors. The ship was the United States of America, while the fearful trip was the hardships of the American Civil War. The captain was Lincoln himself. Oh, captain, my captain, thou art weapon. Oh, captain, my captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The pride we saw is won. The port is near, the bells I hear. The people all exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel, the vessel grim and daring. Oh, heart, heart, heart. Oh, the bleeding drops of red. Where on the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. Oh, Captain, my Captain, rise up and hear the bells. Rise up, for you the flag is flown, for you the bugle trill. 
Thank you. 
nine gods his Lord, and named twice a day, and made his messengers ride forth east and west and south and north to summon his way. And now hath every city sent up her tale of men. The foot are fourscore thousand, the horse are thousands ten. Before the gates of Sutrum is met the great array. A proud man was our Corsana upon the trysting day. But by the yellow Tiber was tumult and affright. From all the spacious champagne, to Rome men took their flight. A mile around the city, the throng swept up the ways. A fearful sight it was to see through two long nights and days. They held the council standing before the river gate. Short time was there, you may well guess, for musing more debate. I'll stake the council around me, then bridge the straighter down. For since the Nicky was lost, not else can save the town. Just then a scout can fly, all wild with haste and fear. Two arms, two arms, Sir Consul, our Corsena is here. On the low hills to westward, the Consul fixed his eye, and saw the swirly storm of dust as passed along the sky. And nearer and faster and nearer doth the red rolling come, and louder still, and still more loud, from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpets for no crowd, the trampling and the hum. And plainly and more plainly, now through the blue appears, far to left and far to right, in broken gleams of dark blue light, the long array of helmets bright, the long array of spears. Then now say the great Horatius, the captain of the gate, to every man upon this earth that cometh soon or late. And how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods? Hew down the bridge, Sir Consul, with all the speed he may. I was sworn to help me, will hold the fell in play. In yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped by three. Now who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with thee? There now six furious larches, a ring and proud of sea. Lo, I will stand on thy right hand and keep the bridge with thee. There now stay strong Herminius, of Titian blood with thee. I will abide on thy left side and keep the bridge with thee. Horatius, quoth the consul, as thou sayest, so let it be. And straight against that great array, forth went the dauntless three. For Romans and Rome's quarrel, spare neither land nor gold, nor son, nor wife, nor land, nor life, the brave days of old. Now, now all the three were tightening, their harness on their backs, the consul was the foremost man to take in hand and axe. And fathers mixed with commons, seized hatchet, bar, and crow, and smote upon the planks above, and loosed the props below. Meanwhile the Tuscan army, bright glorious to behold, came flashing back in the new daylight, rank on rank like surges bright of a broad sea of gold. Four hundred trumpets sounded, a peal of warlike flea, as that great host with measure tread and spears advanced and ends and spread went slowly toward the bridge's head where stood the dauntless three. The three stood calm and silent and looked upon the foes, and a great shout of laughter from all the vanguard arose. And before three chiefs came spurring, before that deep array, to earth they sprang their swords they drew and lifted high their shields and flew to win the narrow way. On the larches hurled down on us into the stream beneath, Herminius struck at Seus and clove him to the teeth. At pike this brave Horatius darted in one fiery thrust, and the proud Umbrian's gilded arms clashed in the bloody dust. But meanwhile, axe and leaguer had manfully been plied, and now the bridge was tottering above the boiling tide. Come back, come back, Horatius, let cry the fathers all. Back, Horatius, back, Herminius, back, Andrew and Paul. O long stood brave Horatius, though constant still in mind, thrice thirty thousand foes before and the broad flood behind. Down with him, cried false Sextus, with a smile on his pale face. Now yield thee, cried large Corsina, now yield thee to our grace. Run to turn thee as not deigning, those craven ranks to see. Not spake he to large Corsina, to Sextus not spake he. But he saw on Palatinus, the white porch of his home, and he spake to the noble river that rolls by the towers of Rome. O Tiber, Father Tiber, to whom the Romans pray, a Roman's life, a Roman's arms, take thou in charge this day. And so he spake, and speaking sheep, the good sword by his side, and with his harness on his back, which had long in the tide. No, no sound of joy nor sorrow was heard from either bank, but friends and foes in dumb surprise, with parted lips and straining eyes, stood gazing where he sank. And when above the surges they saw his crest appear, all Rome sent forth a rapturous cry, and even the ranks of Tuscany could scarce forbear to cheer. And now he feels the bottom, now on dry earth he stands, now round him throng the fathers to press his gory hands. And now with shouts and clapping and noise of weeping loud, 
He enters through the river gate, borne by the joyous crowd. They gave the public the cornland that was of public right, as much as two strong oxen could have plowed from morn till night. And they made a molten image and set it up on high, and there it stands unto this day to witness if I lie. It stands in the comedian, plain for all folk to see. Horatius in his harness, halting upon my knee, and underneath is written, in letters all of gold, how well Horatius kept the bridge in the brave days of old. When the oldest cask is open, and the largest lamp is lit, when the chestnuts grow in the embers, and the king turns on the spit, when young and old in circle, around the fire branch goes, when the girls are weaving baskets, and the lads are shaping bows, when the good man mends his armor, and he trims his helm with gloom, when the good wife shuttle merrily goes flashing through the wind, with weeping and with laughter, still is the story told, how well Horatius kept the bridge in the brave days of old.